Welcome to Auto Mundial, the weekly car news and reviews show where this week we're taking a look at Audi's all new electric SUV, the Q4 e-tron. Is its Volkswagen derived platform good enough to take on the BMW iX3? We also have the newly updated Seat Ibiza. Is the stylish cut price polo still a worthy alternative? Plus, the new BMW 5 Series faces off against the Mercedes E-Class and Audi A6, while the new VW Arteon R goes head-to-head -head with Kia's fast Stinger. That is all coming up. First, though, the news. BMW has begun testing of a hydrogen fuel cell prototype known as the iHydrogen Next SUV. Based on an X5, the prototype is being tested on the road ahead of a pilot production phase next year. BMW is aiming to have its first hydrogen fuel cell vehicle on sale by 2025, although that is set to be dependent on infrastructure and market conditions. This X5-based test car is the first of a series of prototypes that will be driven thousands of miles on public roads to evaluate their safety, efficiency and reliability. For the early adopters among you, however, Toyota is already selling a hydrogen-powered car and has been doing so for some time. In fact, the Mirai is now in its second generation, with the first model having been released back in 2014. BMW has indeed been taking more than just inspiration from Toyota, with the iHydrogen Next SUV using fuel cells from the Mirai. BMW and Toyota have been working together on the project for some time and will continue to do so as the industry, consumers and legislators consider the future of hydrogen cars. The Seat Ibiza has long been a somewhat left-field choice in the world of super minis. It's not as obvious as its VW Polo stablemate and not as revered as the ubiquitous Ford Fiesta, and yet Seat has quietly been selling Ibithas in their millions since 1984. And now, with the current fifth generation car four years into its lifespan, it's had a bit of a facelift. Still as stylish as ever, the looks alone really do make us wonder why it's consistently outsold by the more expensive Polo. And that's a good job, because not a great deal has changed on the outside. There are some new colours to choose from, more alloy wheel options and the grille badge has been updated. Around the back, there's the fancy new Ibiza script in a handwritten style as we've seen previously on the new Leon. Most of the work, though, has gone into the interior and updating the kit on offer. All trim levels now come with LED headlights as standard, and even the most basic versions come with an updated infotainment system now sitting higher up on the dash. On base spec SE models, it's an 8.25 inch display, while SE technology cars and up get a 9.2 inch screen. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included, as is a new voice recognition system, which is activated with the very Spanish command of Hola, Hola. The dashboard has been completely retrimmed in soft touch plastic, while some new air vents fill the gap left where the old infotainment screen used to sit. High-spec cars also get a digital instrument cluster, while all versions get some fancy ambient lighting. The new Ibiza is also fitted with Seat's eSIM, which lets you lock and unlock the car, find its parking location and check its fuel level all through your smartphone. Extra safety equipment has been added, including lane keep assist, blind spot assist, and a semi-autonomous driving system that can take control of the steering, throttle and brakes on the motorway. The updated Ibiza is as up-to-date as Super Minis get, and best of all, it's still cheaper than the Volkswagen Polo. For decades now, the BMW 5 Series has been one of the most popular cars in the executive saloon market. 
famed for its premium image and rear-wheel drive balance, the 5 Series is still a class favourite both as a saloon and as an estate, but now it's had a refresh. Updated for 2021, perhaps unsurprisingly, the kidney grills have grown, while the headlights have become slimmer. Both the front and rear bumpers have been updated and there are some new alloy wheel options to choose from if you go for the popular M Sport trim level. But it's under the bonnet where the changes are most prominent. The majority of four and six cylinder versions now come with a 48 volt mild hybrid system which gives you an extra 11 brake horsepower to help get you off the line more quickly and help with overtaking. The 530E plug-in hybrid model is now available in touring form and there's a new six-cylinder PHEV called the 545E which gets 387 brake horsepower and all-wheel drive. The top of the 5 Series tree is still the mighty 600 horsepower M5 but all versions now come with more standard kit across the board. However, is this mild refresh enough to keep it competitive against its rivals? Namely, this, the new Mercedes E-Class. Like the BMW, the E-Class has received some nip and tuck surgery recently with a fresh face and new equipment. The changes are pretty similar to those of the 5 Series, with new bumpers, a new grille and some reshaped headlights helping it to look as up-to-date as anything from the rest of the mind-boggling Mercedes range. The E-Class, though, has always been the brand's bread and butter. It's no niche-busting crossover or shooting brake, and as such, the designers haven't gone over the top. This new E-Class is as classy as it ever was, with a smart new steering wheel complementing the tech-filled cabin. There are six powertrains to choose from, ranging from a turbocharged 2.0-litre petrol mild hybrid up to a 3.0-litre V6 and several diesel options. As before, two AMG versions top the lineup with the 423 brake horsepower E53 AMG and the full fat E63S, which gets a fire-breathing 4.0-litre V8 producing 604 bhp. Perhaps the most intriguing car in the range though isn't a 200 miles per hour AMG, but instead a 200 miles per gallon diesel hybrid. The E300 DE Fev takes the 2 litre diesel engine available elsewhere in the lineup and teams it with an electric motor for a combined 302 brake horsepower. It isn't as quick as the petrol hybrid version, but it is incredibly economical, with Mercedes claiming it's capable of up to 235 miles per gallon, while the electric only range is limited to 34 miles. On the road, it's as refined as a petrol fed and doesn't feel lacking in performance at all, reaching 62 miles per hour from rest in just under six seconds. However, we can't talk about the 5 Series and E-Class without mentioning this, the Audi A6. While its design has remained unchanged since its launch in 2018, it still looks just as smart and modern as its competitors from BMW and Mercedes with its angular headlights and muscular stance. But it's inside the cabin where the A6 really shines. There are three main screens, two in the dash and one digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel, each displaying crisp, bright graphics. They're intuitive and easy to use once you get used to them and make the whole car seem very cutting edge. Like the BMW and Mercedes, it gets a wide range of engine options as well as two performance versions, the diesel-powered S6 and the estate-only RS6. As a car to drive every day and soak up the miles though, we still love the BMW 5 Series. Even the lowliest models are well equipped and great to drive, while the performance versions are among the most dynamic saloon cars on the market. The competition is tighter than ever, but the BMW remains our go-to. Join us again after the break as we take a look at Audi's brand new Q4 e-tron.
coming up. Electric SUVs from Audi and BMW, but first... What do you do if you want a smart saloon car but don't want a flashy premium badge? Well, if the likes of the Vauxhall Insignia and Ford Mondeo are a bit too bland, VW has you covered with this, the Artian. Recently revealed with an updated look for 2020, the new Artian is the Passat's angry sibling with more aggressive styling and a lower coupe-like roofline. The front and rear bumpers have both been updated and there's a range of new colour options. But despite the Artian's good looks, up until now it's always played second fiddle to the cheaper, more practical Passat. Now though, VW has added some versatility to the lineup with the Artian shooting brake or estate to you and me. Unlike the saloon version, it remains a flatter roof line for more headroom and a bigger boot. In fact, with the parcel shelf removed and rear seats folded, it isn't far off a Passat estate with over 1,600 litres of space. The shooting brake should certainly extend Artian's appeal then, especially as we can think of very few estate cars that look half as good as this. The interior has also received some minor updates. There are some new wood veneers available and all cars now come with at least part leather upholstery. It also gets an updated infotainment system like the one in the new Golf and all sorts of clever new tech like the travel assist function which allows you to drive hands-free up to 130 miles per hour. The most exciting update, however, is the arrival of a new R model. We've always thought the Artian deserved a performance variant, and here it is. Available both as a saloon and an estate, the Artian R aims to tempt buyers away from the BMW 3 Series with 316 brake horsepower on tap courtesy of a turbocharged 2 litre. Power is sent to all four wheels via a seven-speed double-clutch auto box. It also gets a torque vectoring system which can send all of the engine's power to one wheel if required. And, of course, it wouldn't be an R model without some suitably sporty styling tweaks. In this case, the R versions get enormous 20-inch alloys, a mean-looking body kit with bigger splitters and diffusers, quad exhausts and some body-hugging sports seats trimmed in Nappa leather. The R models also sit lower and have some meaty 18-inch brake discs with four piston calipers up front for extra stopping power. However, the Artyon R isn't the only sporty saloon with a humble badge. This is the Kia Stinger GTS, a turbocharged V6 Bruiser with 365 brake horsepower being sent straight to the rear wheels. It's a car like nothing we've seen from Kia before or since, with fantastic performance and a real premium feel throughout. In fact, step inside and you could be forgiven for thinking that you just got into something with much more badge appeal. The cabin is trimmed in soft leather with lots of modern trim and a big infotainment screen. It looks the part too, with a coupe-like roof line, muscular wheel arches and four massive tailpipes, letting you know this isn't the diesel model. Plant your right foot and the stinger erupts with a sonorous V6 howl as the traction control scrambles to keep the rear end in check. It's not quite an M3 or RS4, but this is a genuinely quick car, getting from a standstill to 62 miles per hour in under 5 seconds onto a top speed of 168. There is one giveaway that this is new territory for Kia, however. The paddle shift gearbox feels a little slow and clumsy compared to many others on the market, but it's by no means a deal breaker, and the finely tuned chassis more than makes up for it, making it feel much lighter than it actually is. It's a car you can grab by the scruff of the neck on a twisty road and then let it settle down for a comfortable commute with all the luxuries of more mainstream alternatives. It's a terrific car and definitely worth considering if you're after an affordable performance saloon.
Both of these cars show that you don't need to head straight to the usual suspects of BMW, Audi and Mercedes for a quick, stylish saloon car. They're totally left field and great cars for those who want to stand out. It's been almost two years now since we first saw Volkswagen's ID3 and with it the brand's electric MEB platform. Since then we've seen it appear on the ID4, the Skoda Enyaq and even a new Cupra. Now though it's Audi's turn and this is what they've come up with. It's called the Q4 e-tron. Q4 representing its place in the brand's SUV lineup and e-tron denoting its electric powertrain. To the untrained eye, unlike the ID3, it isn't obviously an electric car. It all looks fairly conventional, and there's even what appears to be a big grille at the front. It is a handsome car, though, and one which stands out from the Q3 and Q5, between which it sits in the range. In true Audi fashion, it gets some very swanky LED lights, including a full-width light bar at the rear. 19-inch alloys come as standard with optional 20s and 21s which make it look a bit meaner. It's a chunky looking car with a low roof line, but for style conscious buyers there's also a coupe version called the Q4 Sportback. This sacrifices some practicality in the name of looking good, with a tapered roof line creating a rakish, sporty silhouette. Inside, the Q4 gets a modern driver-centric layout with the big infotainment screen and controls angled towards the driving seat. The drive selector sits on a floating panel, giving you some extra space below it. The cabin is airy and spacious, with extra room in the back seats compared with most ICE cars thanks to the flat floor. The boot is big too, 520 litres with some underfloor storage for your charging cables. Fold the seats down and cargo capacity is up to nearly 1500 litres. Interestingly, the coupe shaped sportback version has a bit more boot capacity, 535 litres, but the low window line means taller items may have to go on the back seats. There are three different powertrain options to choose from. The £40,000 entry-level 35 model gets a 52 kilowatt-hour battery, 168 brake horsepower and a 208 mile range. Next up is the 40. It costs about £4,000 more and gets a bigger 77 kilowatt-hour battery, 201 brake horsepower and a much improved range of 360 miles. This middle of the range model is the one to go for if you want maximum mileage from your Q4. If you're more interested in performance though, the top spec 50 uses the same battery but power is increased to 296 brake horsepower. The range drops to just below 300 miles but it'll hit 62 miles per hour from rest in 6.2 seconds. That isn't exactly rapid in the world of EVs but it's quick enough in a family SUV. So how does it compare against this BMW's new iX3? Well, unlike the Audi, the BMW isn't built on a bespoke EV platform, rather on that of a conventional internal combustion-powered X3. It does get a few styling tweaks, though, to help it stand out from its petrol-powered counterparts. The front bumper has been smoothed over, and the kidney grills have been filled in to improve the aerodynamics in the name of efficiency. To further aid this, it gets some aero alloy wheels which improve the car's drag coefficient by around 5%. At the back end, the rear bumper has been given the same smooth treatment as the front one and there are two blue plates where the exhaust pipes would normally live. The interior is near enough identical to the standard X3s apart from a few flashes of blue and an iX3 badge on the centre console. 
It may not be quite as flashy as the Audi's cabin, but while the design is starting to feel its age, everything is logical, easy to use and well put together. However, while the iX3 is a little bit bigger than the Q4, it's a lot more expensive. Prices start at over £58,000 and the 282 mile range is not spectacular. It seems then that the Audi Q4 e-tron has the BMW beaten on value for money. But with more and more competitors entering this segment of the market, time will tell if the Q4 is the electric mid-size SUV to beat. Join us again next week on Auto Mundial as we bring you a gorgeous new drop-top Grand Tourer from Lexus.